Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's start with the quote of the day. It takes a good fall to really know where you stand. The topic I'll be presenting today is diphtheria. I'll be giving this presentation under the current supervision of my honorable supervisor, Professor Dr. Sai Rabsi. Learning outlines of uh, today's presentation are introduction of diphtheria, epidemiological triad, chain of transmission, clinical types, levels of prevention, recent advances, and MCQs. The learning outcomes are by the end of the presentation, participants will be able to describe about diphtheria, mode of prevention, treatment, recent updates, and MCQs. Let's start with the introduction. Diphtheria is a bacterial infection caused by corny bacterium diphtheria transmitted from person to person through close physical and respiratory contact. It can cause infection of the respiratory tract, throat, nose, larynx, local with the uh, local production of pulse membrane with the release of exotoxins, which may lead to the breathing difficulties and death. Occurrence. Prevalence throughout the world occurs in a uh, temperate zone. Epidemics are usually local and not widespread. In countries where effective primary immunization practice, it has uh, become rare. Agent. Cornibacterium diphtheria or cleps, uh, or cleps Leffler bacillus. It's a gram positive club shaped comparing Chinese letter L and V. Uh, four types are gravis, mitis, intermedius, and minimus. Host children of one to five years of age, both sexes, low socioeconomic status, infants are immune till six months of age because of maternal antibodies. Environment. Mostly during winter and autumn, and overcrowding is also a factor here. Now, uh, the chain of transmission. Uh, first is the reservoir, and then is the infected person, case, or carrier. Source of infection, nasopharyngeal secretions, discharge from the skin lesions, contaminated fomites, and infected dust. Mode of transmission. Uh, there are two modes of transmission. The two modes are direct and the indirect. Direct is by infected uh, cutaneous lesions, droplet infection, and the indirect uh, is the fomite one. Portal of entry uh, is via the respiratory route. Second is the non-respiratory route. And then uh, it's by the cuts, wounds, ulcers, umbilicus in the newborn. Periods of communicability. 14 to 28 days from the onset of disease. Carriers may have much longer time. The incubation period is two to six days. The pathogenesis. Bacteria multiplies in the throat and releases powerful exotoxin, which is responsible for formation of grayish or yellowish membrane, false pseudo membrane all over tonsils, pharynx, and larynx with well defined edges and can be wiped away. Marked congestion, edema, and local tissue destruction. And there will be uh, enlargement of the regional lymph nodes and then signs and symptoms of toxemia. Here you can see a pictorial representation as well. Remote effects of the diphtheria toxin uh, seen on the heart, kidney, liver, adrenals, and peripheral nerves. Diphtheria antitoxin may neutralize the circulating toxin, but ineffective once cell penetrating uh, penetration has occurred. Now let's talk about the different clinical types. First one is the pharyngeal diphtheria. Early manifestations are mild sore throat, fever and malaise, membrane formation, stridor, dysphagia, enlarged cervical lymph nodes, producing a bull neck. Toxic look. Uh, the second one is the laryngeal diphtheria. Usually associated with pharyngeal diphtheria may be primary with or without membrane. There would be hoarseness, cough, stridor, and uh, restlessness, cyanosis, death usually occurs due to suffocation. Then the, uh, there is nasal diphtheria. It's chronic serous or seropurulent discharge, crusty, exudated around the nose. There would be foul odor and the white membrane on the nasal membrane. Then uh, number four is the cutaneous diphtheria. 
also called the desert sower. Chronic tropical ulcer, punched out ulcer, and it's uncommon. Then so on, there would be ocular diphtheria, vagin vaginal diphtheria, and the rare types are also there. The complications. Uh, the complications include the respiratory failure, which uh, would have occlusion of airway by membrane. Second uh, is the acute toxic myocarditis. It can lead to the arrhythmias and a sudden death in the cardiac failure. Number third is the neurological, which would include parietal palsy, ocular palsy, and polyneuritis. And then there would be the renal complications. So starting with the primary prevention, primary prevention of the disease is by ensuring high population immunity through immunization. Specific protection, which is the immunization, diphtheria toxic, toxide. The toxide is growth grown in the liquid medium from toxigenic uh, chronic bacterium diphtheria, available in combination with pertussis and tetanus vaccine, gives clinical efficacy of 97%. Allergy toxide or any components of vaccine is a contraindication for administration. Local reaction like erythema is common, should be stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. Frozen vaccine should never be uh, administered. Primary vaccination schedule. So the primary dose, the dose one, is at the age two with in, uh, interval that is not. Dose primary two, like the second dose, uh, would be at the age four months and interval uh, interval are four weeks. Dose primary, uh, the third one, uh, is at the age six. So the interval uh, is four weeks. Uh, fourth dose uh, is at the age of 4, 15 to eight, 18 months and the interval is six months. DTAP, diphtheria, tetanus toxide, and ACE and vaccine is a vaccine of choice for children six weeks through six years of age. If child has valid contraindication to produce this vaccine, then pediatric DT should be used to complete the vaccination series. If the four doses of DT, DTP, or DTAP are administered before the fourth birthday, a booster fifth dose is recommended at age four through six years of age. You can see uh, in this table the childhood immunization schedule for diphtheria, tetanus, and acellular pertussis, DTAP uh, vaccination. So given in birth, at birth, the first dose uh, uh, the, at, at two months, then the second dose at four months, the third dose is at the six months, the fourth dose is at the 15 to 18 months, and then the fifth dose uh, is uh, in between four to six years. Tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis booster doses. Four to six years of age before entering school, DTAP should be given. Uh, should be given at eleven to twelve years of age. TDAP. It is a booster immunization given at age eleven. Every ten years there thereafter, TD. It protects the adults. People of all ages need diphtheria vaccines. DTAP for the young children. Uh, that is like two, four, and six months, and uh, fifteen through fifteen months. And Tdap for uh, uh, Tdap and then the Td or the Tdap uh, for the adults every ten years, and Tdap for uh, the uh, for uh, for the children that is from the eleven through twelve years. So here you can see the schedule, the EPI schedule, and you can see all the vaccination schedule here as well. Secondary prevention. Secondary prevention of spread by the rapid investigation of close contacts to ensure their proper treatment. Diagnosis. It is mainly clinical. Simple throat smear should be examined. If diphtheria-like organisms, culture should be administered. Administration of antitoxin without waiting culture report. Shake test. Immunity to diphtheria can be determined by the shake test. Useful for detecting persons at high risk, such as physicians, nurses, and hospital staff. Uh, the intradermal test. 0.2 ml of shik test toxin is injected into the skin of forearm as test, while 0.2 ml of inactivated toxin is injected on uh, other forearm as control. Depends on the fact that the toxin exerts local destructive or irritating actions on the tissues. Interpretation of the results. So, uh, it can be positive, negative, combined reaction, or the pseudo-positive reaction. In the case of positive reaction, circumscribed area of redness up to 3 cm or more in diameter 
within 24 to 36 hours and maximum by 4 to 7 day on test arm and control arm has no change uh, susceptible to diphtheria. In the case of negative reaction, both arms are without reaction. Person is immune. When there is a combined reaction, true arm shows true positive and control arm shows pseudo positive susceptible to diphtheria. Uh, when there would be pseudo-positive reaction, red flush appear, uh, appears on both arms, but fades within four days, allergic type of reaction, chic negative. Now, the control and the treatment. For the control and treatment, there would be early detection in, of the cases in the carriers, isolation, and then the treatment is given. Control of the patients. Uh, first, there should be notification to the local health, uh, uh, health authorities. And then uh, isolation imposed unless two consecutive cultures from the throat and two from nose, 24 hours apart, fail to show virulent diphtheria bacilli. A. Cases. Diphtheria antitoxin should be given without delay intramuscular after given 0.2 ml subcutaneous as a test dose. Uh, in the mild cases, uh, 40,000 units should be given. In the moderate cases, 80,000 units should be given. And in the severe cases, 120,000 uh, units should be given. Benzylpensilin 2.5 plaque units every 6 hours or erythromycin 250 uh, milligram every 6 hours for 5 to 6 days. In the case of ca uh, carriers, erythromycin 250 milligram every 6 hourly for 10 days should be administered. When we talk about the con context, if primary immunization or booster within previous 2 years, no further uh, action needed. If primary immunization or booster dose of uh, DT more than two years before, only booster dose of DT should be given. And uh, if there are, uh, if non -immun uh, immunizing, uh, if, if there is no immunization, close contact should receive a prophylactic penicillin or erythromycin with 1,000 to 2,000 uh, 2, units of diphtheria antitoxin and actively uh, immunize against diphtheria. Uh, and uh, if the context should uh, uh, context should be examined daily for seven days for any evidence of diphtheria. Uh, so for the community, active immunization with diphtheria of all infants with uh, subsequent booster doses every 10 years thereafter. Institutional control. In case of diphtheria breakout, in close community like uh, boarding houses or, or uh, orphanages, juvenile jails, schools and hospitals, etc., the whole community should be actively and passively uh, immunized with refined antitoxin in one arm, 1,000 to 1,500 units for an adult and 750, uh, 750 to 1,000 units for children, intramuscular and 0.5 cc of APT, LM uh, precipitated tox uh, toxide in the opposite arm subcutaneously at the earliest opportunity. The antitoxin provides temporary production lasting about two to three weeks. After two weeks, uh, a second dose of 0.5 cc of APD should be given. After this, take throat swabs of the entire population and segregate all throat uh, swab positive virulent carriers for 15 days because this is the time when passive immunity, which lasts only for 15 days, starts fading away and active immunity starts developing. After this period of 15 days of segregation, the active immunity will rise sufficiently to protect the inoculated uh, persons from the risk of infection. Now, the tertiary prevention. Tertiary prevention of complications and deaths by early diagnosis and proper management should be done. Now, the time for the recent updates. WHO recommended surveillance standards of diphtheria. So, uh, the rationale was that diphtheria is a, wide, a widespread severe infectious disease that has the potential for epidemics. The control of diphtheria is based on the following three measures. First is the primary prevention of disease by ensuring high population immunity through immunization. Secondary prevention of the spread by the rapid investigation of close contacts to ensure their proper treatment. Tertiary prevention of complications and deaths by early diagnosis and proper management. Surveillance data can be used to monitor levels of coverage and disease as a measure of the impact of control programs. Recent epidemics have highlighted the need for adequate surveillance and epidemic preparedness. So the recommended case definition is basically that uh, an illness characterized by laryngitis or pharyngitis or tonsillitis and an adherent mem uh, membrane of the tonsils, pharynx, and uh, nose. And the lab criteria for diagnosis would be isolation of chronic bacterial diphtheria from a clinical specimen or fourfold or greater rise in serum antibody. Epidemiological update. 
So uh, there have been different situations being analyzed in 2021 between epidemiological week one and 42. Four countries report confirmed case of diphtheria. Brazil with one case, Colombia with one fatal case, Haiti uh, with 18 cases, including three deaths, and the Dominican Republic with 18 cases, including 12 deaths. So this is another article uh, with, that is, what is the burden of diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, and polio virus in children aged 3 to 18 years in Asia, systematic literature review. The conclusion shows the true burden of diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus in children aged 3 to 18 years in Asia is unknown because of weak or absent national wide surveillance systems. The available evidence highlights the adequate in, uh, uh, inadequacies in immunity uh, either by gaps in our recommendation or suboptimal booster coverage supporting the public health need for booster vaccinations in this population. No uh, time for the multiple uh, choice questions. Number one, XYZ patients administered in hospital with the suspicion of diphtheria and proper isolation is also done by the incubation period of disease pass uh, and there is uh, is chance of spread for close contacts. What is the recommendation of immunization for close contacts? A, if primary immunization or booster within two years, no further action. B, if primary immunization or booster within three years, no further action. C, if primary immunization or booster within four years, no further action. D, if primary immunization or booster within five years, no further action. E, if primary immunization or booster within six years, no further action. Anyone? Yeah. Yes, it is A. Number two, XYZ patients presented in ENT OPD with com complaints of fever, sore throat, and pain on swelling. After examining, doctor confirmed that the diagnosis of diphtheria. The isolation period recommended for this patient is still A, complete blood picture becomes normal, B, two consecutive negative throat and uh, nasal swab cultures, C, negative chest radiographs, D, after completion of the antibiotic course, E, five consecutive negative throat and the nasal swab cultures. A, B. Yes, the answer is B. Third, a person underwent shik test and throat culture for diphtheria. It was revealed that he is shik negative but throat culture positive. He is A, patient, B, carrier, C, immune, D, susceptible, E, non-immune. B. Uh, it's A patient. Fourth, eight year old boy presented in OPD with complaints of fever, sore throat, and difficulty in swelling. On examination, there is membrane formation of uh, formation at back of throat and in large cervical node produce a bull neck appearance. Um, a, it would be pharyngeal, uh, pharyngeal diphtheria, B, laryngeal, C, nasal diphtheria, D, cutaneous, E, none. E. A, pharyngeal diphtheria. Fifth, when your old child was tested for diphtheria, his <laughs> was taken and shift test was performed. Final result was uh, were throat in his uh, were that in his throat culture was negative, while his shift uh, test was strongly positive. On the basis of these results, he is a case of diphtheria, B immune to diphtheria, C carrier, D susceptible to diphtheria, E not, not a case of diphtheria. D. B. The answer is D. Susceptible to diphtheria. Six. XYZ patient presented in dermatology OPD with chronic tropical ulcer. On examination, the ulcer is punched out in characteristic on the arm of the patient, which is the type of diphtheria occurring on the uh, occurring according to the statement. A. Pharyngeal. B. Laryngeal diphtheria. C. Cutaneous diphtheria. D. Nasal. And E. None. C. C. Cutaneous. Yes, it is C. Cutaneous. Seventh, patient is ad uh, admitted in hospital with the diagnosis of diphtheria. Patient facing the problem of restlessness and difficulty in breathing on 14th day of administration. Admission. Patient was expired. Which types of diphtheria is fatal? A. Pharyngeal. B. Laryngeal. C. Cutaneous. D. Nasal diphtheria. E. Not a case of diphtheria. B. 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 Eight, diphtheria is bacterial infection caused by chronic bacterial diphtheria transmit, uh, transmitted from person to person, which is the following. Age group is mostly affected by diphtheria. A, one to five years. B, uh, less than six months of age. C, 
greater than 65 years d a woman of reproductive age e woman of any age a a a no ninth a diphtheria vaccine uh, consists of diphtheria toxin available in combination with pertussis and tetanus vaccine which of the following is not true about the vaccine administration a people of all ages do not need diphtheria vaccine b it is vaccine of choice for children 6 uh, weeks uh, through 6 years of age only c booster tdap is given at 11 years d in adults booster dose is given every 10 years e people of all ages do need diphtheria vaccine d b it's a not true then there are multiple combination of vaccine which are used to secure the child from three diseases like pertussis tetanus and diphtheria which combination is used in infant age group a dtap b dt c uh, dp d apt or e at a yes the answer is a here is the key of the mcqs thank you so much everyone uh, here is the link for the youtube channel please like and subscribe all the videos are being uploaded here and thank you so much for your time and attention